The San Antonio Spurs have had a terrible season, to put it nicely. And honestly, they very well could have been the worst team in the NBA. But what if we told you that these next three players that we're about to talk about could maybe change all of that as early as next season? And yes, we're talking about Keldon Johnson, Jeremy Sohan, and Devin Vassell. We're not saying they're gonna assemble the greatest trio of all time or anything, but we really believe they are great building blocks for the Spurs' future, especially since they're all under the age of 23. But how good are they actually? Well, to find that out, we've gotta take a deep dive and break down each of their games individually, starting with Devin Vassell. On the season, Devin is averaging 18 and a half points, four rebounds, and 3.6 assists while shooting 44% from the field, 78% from the free throw line, and 38% from three on seven attempts per Per game. Unfortunately, he missed a large portion of the season due to a knee surgery. But even after coming back, he's still putting up good numbers. And he's even averaging 17 points, four rebounds and four assists while shooting 38% from three over his last seven games. But what's really impressive about his growth is that when he was drafted, he was just seen as your typical 3 and D player. But now he's slowly progressing into something a lot more. When it comes to his driving and finishing ability, he doesn't really get to the rim a lot, but he is shooting 61% on two and a half attempts in the restricted area. So he has some potential here. He's great at using his length to convert layups over both smaller and taller players. And while he doesn't have amazing speed with the ball in his hands, he makes up for it with his long strides. While his ability to get to the rim is still in its early stages, his mid-range shot is very well developed. He's 10th in the NBA in mid-range percentage when you factor in attempts, shooting 46% on 4.6 attempts per game. So he's not only a good shooter, but he's borderline elite in this category among the best mid-range specialists in the league. And what's great about his mid-range is that he can shoot effectively from practically anywhere. The right side of the court, left side, and of course down the middle. And that's where he sort of reminds us of a shorter Brandon Ingram. Because Brandon doesn't really have one particular spot he gets to in the mid-range. And players like Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, and Devin Booker all shoot their mid-ranges either just above the free throw line or at the elbow. And that's clearly not a negative because obviously they're still dominant that way, even more so than Vassal. But after years of watching each of them, that's where we think they separate as mid-range scorers. Devin Vassell loves to drive, then get into a jump stop before shooting a fadeaway type mid-range shot, similar to Kawhi Leonard. But Vassell really loves shooting from the right side of the court. And again, this is where we see a lot of Brandon Ingram. Because we honestly don't think we've seen another player shoot more right side mid-range jumpers than Ingram and Vassell. But enough of the comparisons. Vassell has really elevated his game this season. And if he keeps improving on volume and efficiency from the mid-range, we would not be surprised to see him averaging 20 to 21 points next season. As a passer, he's okay. Nothing great, but definitely not bad. But as a three-point shooter, he really excels. And like we mentioned earlier, he's shooting 38% on seven attempts. And when you can shoot a really good percentage on a high number of attempts, that usually means you're an elite shooter, or at least borderline. And this is another reason why we think he could average a little over 20 points per game. Because when you have an elite mid-range and a three-pointer that can put a lot of pressure on the defense, it makes getting buckets a whole lot easier. And speaking of defense, he's really good at that too. And that's why he has such a high ceiling. He can do everything on the court. Defensively, he can defend three positions at a pretty solid level. He also possesses a 6 foot 10 wingspan, which is enormous given the fact that he's only 6 foot 5. He uses those long arms to be disruptive both on and off the ball. Overall, he's just a really disciplined defender who excels as a team and help side defender as well. And while the Spurs do have horrific defense this year, it's definitely not his fault. But now let's talk about the rookie Jeremy Sohan. He's averaging 11 points, 5 rebounds, and 2 assists, while shooting 45% from the field, 34% from three, and 69% from the free throw line. And yes, we know those shooting numbers are not great, but there's still some promise in those areas. He's just 19 years old, so he has more than enough time to improve. And honestly, his shooting form doesn't really look that bad. The shots just aren't going in. And adding a dependable three to his game would really add a lot of value. On the inside, he's been pretty good, shooting 62% on four attempts in the restricted area. And he weighs over 230 pounds, so he's naturally a very physical player. And he uses that to his advantage. But it isn't just his size that makes him a solid inside scorer, because he's shown flashes of post moves, floaters, and the ability to finish through contact, whether that be a dunk or a layup. He's also a pretty good cutter off the ball, and that wasn't really utilized as much due to the Spurs not really having a great facilitator or passer on the roster. On the defensive end is where he provides the most value. He can guard three to four positions and sometimes all five positions on his best nights. He has everything you could ever want out of a good defender. He's got the height, the physicality, the mobility, the IQ, the hustle, you name it, he's got it. He's got 
all of the qualities and intangibles to be a great defender. And sure, it's a score first league now, but we really think people undervalue just how important versatile defenders are. Every elite team in the NBA has an elite versatile defender who can defend four to five positions. The Celtics have Marcus Smart, the Grizzlies have Dylan Brooks, the Bucks have Drew Holiday and Giannis, the Nuggets have Aaron Gordon, and the list goes on. And while elite rim protectors are the most important players on a defense, it's usually the versatile defensive stoppers who can change a game by shutting down the opposing team's best scorer. And Sohan has that potential, and he's done it on multiple occasions this season. Overall, he just has a ton of potential. And due to his age, we really wouldn't be too worried about his offensive struggles. But for the third player in this trio, he does not have offensive struggles. Keldon Johnson is averaging 22 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 assists per game while shooting 45% from the field, 74% from the free throw line, and 33% from 3. When it comes to getting to the rim, he's one of the best young drivers and finishers in the league. Johnson is 17th in the NBA in shots in the restricted area, and he's 27th in percentage off of drives. And what really helps him down low is how well built he is. He's 6 foot 5 and weighs a solid 220 pounds. He is really good at using his size to power through smaller guards and wings who defend him. And once he gets deep into the lane, he showcases good footwork and patience. And if he could just add a consistent floater, it would really further polish his offensive game. For example, everyone that plays the Oklahoma City Thunder knows SGA is most likely going to drive to the basket on every possession. But SGA has the ability to mix it up by shooting many different variations of floaters and short jump shots, making him very difficult to predict once he gets into the lane. So we really think that Johnson adding great floaters to his game will work wonders, especially since he's more of an inside wing. He's not really much of a mid-range scorer or three-point shooter this year, which is kind of odd because last season he was a great three-point shooter, shooting nearly 40% on five attempts per game. But this season has been an entirely different story. But the fact that he's averaging over 20 points per game without having a consistent mid-range or three is really impressive. And that's why he has such a high ceiling as well as a scorer. And as a passer, while he isn't elite, he still makes some really good passes every now and then. And it'll be interesting to see how he develops in this department. On the defensive end, it's kind of hard to judge because sometimes he looks like a below average defender and then other times he looks decent. His defense is just very inconsistent and he really doesn't stand out on that end of the court. He doesn't have the best lateral quickness or defensive IQ, but someone with his size and competitiveness should be a little more impactful on that end. But the Spurs overall are such a bad defensive team as a whole that we can't really label him as a bad or good defender just yet. Overall, Devin Vassell, Jeremy Sohan, and Keldon Johnson are a very solid young trio with really good two-way potential. And we think with a little more development from each of them, they could really make some noise next season, if they can all stay healthy, of course. But what do you think? Should the NBA actually be worried about the Spurs next season? Let us know down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.